Welcome to the American Shakespeare Center and the Black Friars Playhouse, the only recreation of Shakespeare's indoor theater. My name is Ralph Allen Cohen. I'm the co-founder of the American Shakespeare Center and its director of mission. And I'm really excited to talk to you today about Shakespeare's plays and about your wonderful club. The first thing I want to say to the reading club is you need to change your name. Your name needs to be the Reading Aloud Club. You have to be the Reading Aloud Club. Uh, you, I know you may be reading alone. I mean, I know you may be by yourself, so be a little crazy. Uh, one of my favorite lines in all of Shakespeare is when Hamlet comes out and tells uh, 3,000 people, now I am alone. I think that's really funny. It's a great joke because, of course, he's surrounded. But it is interesting that, that Hamlet makes really no public speeches. Uh, the, his speeches are, are he's alone. Uh, but to understand how wonderful they are, I urge you to read them aloud. Uh, he has four soliloquies that I, th I think are worth talking about. Uh, and they are, well, they're the four soliloquies. Uh, and in those four soliloquies, he seems to uh, waver back and forth between wanting to die and wanting to act. Those are his kind of two, two poles for those uh, soliloquies, and they're pretty famous. Um, the first one, uh, oh, that this too, too solid flesh should melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew is just a, a very open discussion of, God, it'd be better if I didn't exist, I'd like not to exist, and he begins to look at all the reasons for that. It's an amazing soliloquy because it goes into stream of consciousness. We begin to see he's trying not to think about the reasons that he is tired of the world and, and they, they erupt. Uh, you need to read that aloud just to hear what happens to the word incestuous sheets. Just saying incestuous sheets aloud seems almost illicit and uh, if you read that to yourself it'll just be part of a long speech that you're reading. Uh, the next one uh, is, is, a, uh, is really interesting because it's about theater itself. He's been watching uh, an actor uh, play uh, the part of Hecuba, uh, grieving for her dead husband. Uh, and and uh, he's watching that and he, and he thinks about the fact that his, his feelings about his dead father just aren't big enough. Uh, and that an actor pretending to be a woman, pretending to be, to, not pretending, but a woman, grieving for her husband, uh, can cry. And this makes him feel really bad about himself. Now, if you read that to yourself, you will miss all the fun of what's uh, he to Hecuba or Hecuba to him. Uh, is it the other way around? Is it, <laughs> what's, what's it? Yeah, I think it's from he to Hecuba or uh, Hecuba to him. That he should, Grieve for her. I mean, really, you've got to get to say the words Hecuba. Uh, and when you do, uh, the speech will come alive for you, you'll enjoy yourself more, and you'll certainly understand that these plays were written to be spoken. The next was the famous one, To Be or Not To Be. Uh, and he's back, so that one's about acting, I should act. If that, if that actor can pretend uh, uh, so much that the feelings make that actor cry, then what the hell am I doing uh, not revenging my father? And that, is it, that's his point. So first speech about wishing his flesh would disappear. Second speech about wishing he'd just do something, wanting to push himself forward. And the next one's the most famous one, uh, to be or not to be. And I think that the, what you have to realize about all these questions is that they are the private sorts of thoughts that we have about whether or not we, life is worthwhile and what are we doing with it? I mean, those are the two thoughts I think we all have. There's something about this play that invites all of us into it. Hamlet is frequently played by, uh, by women, for example, and, 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 and when, when women play it, it doesn't, it doesn't change things very much because we all internal, internally are struggling with what is the meaning of life and what are we supposed to be doing with ours. The next one is, uh, is, is how all occasions do inform against me. Uh, he sees Ford and Brass, uh, whom he doesn't speak to, but Ford and Brass is, is, uh, is from Norway and he is invading a country on very small pretense. And he says that that's what being great is, how all occasions do inform about me. I'm watching this delicate prince 
this delicate prince take action on a, on a situation that is really not a minor one. Men will die, but he is acting, and I ought to be more like that. So those are his four solilo soliloquies. If you read them to yourself, then they are just words, 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 he says, about his own reading, when he is reading to himself. And Polonius asks him, what are you doing? And he says, uh, what are you reading? And he says, words, words, words. And, and I, I'd kind of like to end with, well, I'd like to end this, this discussion of speaking aloud, anyhow, with this one point. Try those three words. Try them differently. So maybe it's about how much he loves words. Maybe that's what it's about. So it would be words, words, words. But maybe he, he hates all the talking he's about. He hates words. And they don't, have, don't amount to anything to him. And then he's just bitter about it. Words, words, words. Now, I'm not an actor, but I'm feeling much more what's going on if I'm saying it aloud. Or mix them up. Have him start loving words and have him then hate them. Words, words, words. There's an infinite number of ways to do those three things, and you get to do them if you, if you read them aloud. And finally, I need to say something about the other. There are plenty of other characters in this play. It's so easy just to talk about Hamlet. Uh, it's one of two plays, well, three, that, that look like a one-man show if, if, you, if you don't look at it closely enough. And, but that's just not true. And I think at the end of the play, uh, one of the great things is to look at uh, the conversation between this guy who's Prince of Hamlet, uh, Prince, of Ham Prince of Denmark, and is talking to a grave digger. And, and that's the most famously visual moment in the play. If you see a statue of Hamlet, he's, there's a 95% chance he's got a skull in his hand because it's that scene where the grave digger finds the skull. And I think what's so wonderful about that is from this grave digger's point of view, that skull, is, that skull reminds him of a human being and he celebrates that. Uh, he, what a, he says, uh, a pestilence on him for a mad rogue and he laughs about the fact that once this court jester poured wine on his head. What a guy. And that's how he honors that. But that's not what Hamlet does. Hamlet gets all deep about it. And he says, to what base uses we may return Horatio and he holds up that skull and he says, why may not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander till he find it stopping a bungle? Well, this, this idea that what happens to us is we turn to dust and then what happens to the dust, who knows? Well, Horatio kind of scolds him and says, twere to consider too curiously, to consider so. So what we get here is this grounded man who digs graves and can deal with death and the idea of death, and he does it by celebrating the dead. And then we have our title character uh, who thinks it into, uh, in, into this dark, dark place about how meaningless life is. Read it aloud. Love the words.